not even two weeks after quantitative easing ended, the Federal Reserve had to announce that they were currently working on another major stimulus package, which we now know was Operation Twist, as well as QE 2.5. Due to structural imbalances caused by decades of government involvement in our economy and nearly a century of central bank planning, the Federal Reserve has no choice but to continue to try to keep the bubble propped up. For the past three years, the Fed has cut rates, predicted summer recoveries, provided liquidity to markets, secret bailouts, public bailouts, and the monetization of debt. The Federal Reserve will not monetize the debt. The printing press has been working overtime. However, despite government, media, college, and all conventional wisdom propaganda, the economy just can't turn around. The Keynesian economists just can't figure it out. They continue to try and cure an economy that suffers from too much debt, regulation, and central planning. Basically, manipulation. With even more debt, regulation, and central planning. Now, for over three years, we have been told by Ben Bernanke and friends that things were okay. A recovery was just around the corner, and just a little more stimulus was needed to get us over the hump. The media continues to treat his predictions and assessments as the most accurate source in the world, when his assessments couldn't have a worse track record. Of course, we all know what comes next. 2008 summer recovery, 2009 summer recovery, 2010 summer recovery, and the 2011 summer recovery. Trillions from the government and the Fed have been pumped into the economy. So much so that the US government borrows 45 cents for every dollar it spends. We have been told that this is for our own good, that the spending and borrowing is what saved us from another depression. We have been told that price is becoming more affordable, homes falling in price, and a strong dollar would hurt us. Central planners have created a deflation boogeyman that is going to get us even as record 44 million people apply for food stamps. We can't help but wonder if they wouldn't mind food prices coming down. We have also been told that gold and silver are in a bubble. The evidence is all the we buy gold stores propping up. You know the ones that Americans go to in order to sell their gold for 10 cents on the dollar? Yep, that sounds like a bubble to us too. Central banks are net buyers of gold. In fact, they are loading up on a record amount of gold for 2011. We should note that central banks did not purchase tech stocks in the 1990s or real estate in 2000. China, the number one producer of gold, is now the number one importer of gold. Oh, they are also encouraging their citizens to purchase the yellow metal too. Recently, Bernanke was asked if gold was money by Congressman Ron Paul. Do you, th do you think gold is money? His response was no. No. Just to be clear, gold has been used and stored as money for over 5,000 years. In fact, as already stated, central banks are regularly buying gold. Yet in the land of fiat currency, where for the past 40 years the world has been on a fiat currency experiment, the most important central banker of all is willing to look the world in the face and state that central banks buying gold. Well, it's tradition. Long-term <laughs> tradition. Maybe this is the part of the same tradition when it comes to devaluing the currencies they are in charge of and bailing out the too big to fails. All just a part of the banker family tradition. Almost makes you feel warm and cozy. <laughs> For those that are not familiar with gold, our analysis has shown us that gold is still a store of value around the world. It is only in the West where it is treated as a speculative commodity. Most Americans, especially those who consider themselves experts in economics or business, have no idea that for every 100 ounces of gold sold on the COMEX, there's only one ounce of gold to back it up. Something that has obviously distorted the gold markets and suppressed the price. CrushTheStreet.com believes that gold buying is not a banker tradition. It is a banker's hedge a hedge against their own system of fiat currency that is literally loaned into existence. Yes, we know, we often mention how they love to print, but before they even hit a single button, that was easy. the currency created by the bankers is always loaned out with an interest rate, making an increase in the currency supply inevitable. Because in order to pay back the banks, there will have to be new currency created in order to cover the interest for the original loan. This entire fraudulent banking system and government-run economics has run amok in the last 40 years. It's no coincidence that 97% of US debt has been accumulated since the death of the dollar's tie to gold in 1971. Suspend the convertibility of the dollar into gold. With the world now backed by the full faith and credit of the United States, who is literally borrowing to service previous borrowing, the game is almost up. Not a dime has been repaid by the US government since 1960. Not a single penny. Debt ceilings year after year are increased without debate. Spending, stimulus, and constant expansion of government is 
pushed by both parties. No matter who is in power, government statistics and forecasts are nothing more but pure propaganda. Yet they are presented as trusted information by the media. The economy is expanding and we are creating jobs. Not one major news agency ever questions government data or absurd government forecasts. A year from now, I think people are going to see that we're starting to make some progress. According to John Williams of ShadowStats.com, senior citizen social security checks are 44% less than what they should be. By excluding things that go up in the official inflation rate, the inclusion of government hedonics, the cost of living increases, according to Mr. Williams, has become the cost of survival index. Debt ceiling propaganda, a complete distraction. Today, the big news of the debt ceiling with Congress and the president arguing over fake cuts that will supposedly happen over the next 10 years. Of course, these cuts and savings are all dependent on government data and forecasts. Currently, Obama is spouting out numbers that project a Fed funds rate that will average 2.5% until 2020, even though the actual average Fed funds rate for the past 30 years has been around 6%. Obama is also projecting a 4.2% growth over the next three years, something that is simply impossible due to the change in our demographics and lack of driver for jobs. Anyone in the media that would simply apply realistic GDP growth or debt interest payments would see that any planned cuts are going to be completely offset by lower revenues and higher interest payments. Even if Congress and the President agree to cut $2 trillion over the next 10 years, we are adding an official $1.5 trillion in new debt on an annual basis. CrushTheStreet.com always makes it a point to say official anytime we mention government debt, since the actual real debt is much higher. If the government included total new debt, all unfunded liabilities that will have to be paid, our annual deficit for 2011 would be $4 trillion, and our total national debt is around $100 trillion. Of course, remember, if we actually paid our senior citizens what was promised, the situation would be even worse. We should note that CrushTheStreet.com is not advocating for entitlements. In fact, we oppose them all as they are highly destructive to society. We are just merely pointing out that the only way those who do advocate for entitlements can argue that they actually work is to manipulate the numbers and screw the very people they say they want to protect.